Hey friends, homesteads are absolutely not built in a day. And if you try to do that, you're gonna drive yourself crazy. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to start. Let's go. So what do you think you should be doing first? Is it buying a cow? How about some sheep? Maybe a spinning wheel? How about a wheat thresher? And get all that set up first. No, please don't do that. None of those things are critical to starting your homestead. So you have to look out and look at the big picture. Stand in the middle of your property and think about infrastructure. So everything that you see behind me, the garden, the solar, the greenhouse, all of the infrastructure has taken me about six years to put together. Infrastructure is so important. When I talk about infrastructure, I mean the three basic things that every survivalist needs, right? If you go out on a mountain trip with your backpack, what do you need? Shelter, food, and water. So when you're on a homestead, you might need to adjust that first, depending on where your property is located. If you're out in the remote woods or mountains somewhere, you need to be able to get to your property and to get onto your property. So if it's fully wooded and you need to grow food for yourself, then obviously cutting down trees and clearing a space for a garden is paramount. But even before that, finding water is super important. So for us here on this property, we had a well and we also are hooked to a rural community water system. Additionally, there's a dry creek, but not much water flows through that. I, I would have loved a live creek, but we just couldn't find that. But you need at least one water source. You can't go a day without water or actually three days without water, but you can go definitely longer than that without food. However, shelter is important too. So if you're coming out to your homestead um, in a camper, awesome. Or you're camping, maybe you put up a yurt, maybe you put up some sort of temporary structure to live in while you build your home, that's great. But think about those things, food, water, and shelter. So it makes sense that you don't want to buy a dairy cow when you have nothing else set up. You need to have, at least for like a dairy cow, you need to have water to water the cow, you have to have a place to feed the cow, you have to have a place to shelter the animal, right? So don't start with those things. I would normally say start small. And that's a advice that I've changed over the years. So especially in today's climate, start as big as you can start, but still try to balance it where you don't overwhelm yourself. I know that sounds a little contradictory, but if you start too small, these times we're getting into right now are way too out of control crazy to be able to start small and just build up over a long period of time. Take the uh, resources that you have and build it in quickly to that infrastructure. But if you're doing it yourself, you can only move at the pace that you can move at. Additionally, on top of that, inflation is out of control. Even though they're trying to manipulate the numbers, just look at the prices of things at the stores, food and building materials, so on and so forth. Now, some things have gone down and that's great. So take advantage of it at this time. Those prices, unfortunately, are going to go back up. If you can, get all that you can get now. Now, friends, realistically, at the beginning, you don't need to be harvesting from your garden immediately. You need to start building the garden, but that's not going to provide food for you right away. Why? Well, because if you're new to growing, it's gonna take you a while to figure it out. It's gonna take you a while to figure out your place, your zone, the area that you're in, and what grows best there. So struggling from day one on trying to grow food for your family out of the garden is gonna be a futile exercise. You need to focus on that infrastructure. So build the garden and start to get the soil right because it takes a long time to build soil. So of course I said food at the beginning, so what should you have? You should have the proper preparation for that by having stores of food. Your dry beans, your rice, all of that kind of stuff, enough to get you through those beginning times. And honestly, you're gonna be going to the grocery store at the beginning anyhow. It takes a long time to build up where you can provide for your family off of your homestead. So I don't want you to go out there and start that right away because you will get discouraged. Now here's something not too many people do that they need to. They need to stand in the middle of their property 
and observe. They need to walk around the property and observe. Where are the sunniest places? Where is the best flat space to grow food? Where is the best place to house your livestock in the future when you get it? Where is the best place to build your house? All of that is incredibly important. How you set up your homestead, and I've talked about this before, is super important. And if you don't take the time to stand back and observe, even looking at a, at a Google Earth map, go on Google Earth, look at your property, and look at, to see where you can put things, and then stand there, observe. An important thing to do when you're starting is to find out who your neighbors are and make friends. Now, you're not gonna be buddy-buddy with everybody, but having good neighbors around is important and connecting with them. So I trade things with my neighbor behind me. I have pretty much one neighbor. Her daughters live on either side of her. And so it's a whole family. They have like 150 acres, something like that, and a whole bunch of cows that you will probably hear in this video. But her and her husband are so kind. They had a big tree come down. They said I could come get all the wood that I wanted. Uh, they loaned me tractor implements for my tractor when I needed them. Uh, I give them extra watermelons and eggs and all this kind of stuff. So it's a good relationship. And in fact, we were at an agricultural conference this week and she watched the property and she was over getting eggs all the time because they're so expensive in the stores. And the poor lady, she lost all her chickens to a stray coyote. Now, if you feel the itch to get animals on your property right away, think about these three, dogs, cats, and chickens. So obviously chickens are gonna provide you a lot, but you need infrastructure for them as well. Some sort of coop, some sort of secure area, depending on how many predators you have in your area. Uh, a good guard dog, or one that just runs circles around your chicken coop the whole day, and some cats. Cats are really important. My cats keep away snakes, mice. Uh, I've seen one with a rabbit in her mouth before, so they are very valuable and all easy to take care of. So in talking about infrastructure, you need to build in some redundancy. You hear me say this a lot on my videos, build in redundancy. So we've got the solar, we've got other means of generating electricity with uh, generators, so on and so forth. We've got water reclamation here on the roof, but we've got the well. We also have the community water source. Redundancy is important. And if you build in those systems now and the very early stages of your um, homesteading journey, then it's going to be a lot less stress down the road if something happens when you need to focus on the things that are important like growing all that food for your family and then preserving all that food because that takes a long time to do. So here's something that not a lot of people think about. Right after you move out onto your homestead, what do you do? Well, you need to get settled in and that takes a little bit of time to do. I mean, don't spend a whole ton of time hanging curtains and you know, setting up furniture or whatever, but it does take some time. So allow yourself some time to do that. I did wanna mention and tag on to something I said earlier. I'm a huge proponent of drawing things out. Obviously, I'm an architect, but I think it's helpful for everybody to do that. Sketch out where the house could be. Sketch out where the best place for your solar is. Sketch out where your garden should be. And that will help things stick in your mind. Always use a pencil so you can erase it, change it around. But getting things in a compact situation where they're easily relatable to one another, so you're not walking 600 yards or driving a half a mile to get to your greenhouse is very important. So think about how you live or will live on your homestead and move around to the different things that you need to take care of. And also to tag on what I was talking about earlier with your, <laughs> with your food preps is to also have things like medical preparation set. You have some sort of solid first aid kit with a tourniquet in it, say an Israeli bandage, and know how to use them. That's very important because if you're in a remote area and you don't have many neighbors, if you get hurt, you're gonna be in serious trouble. Now I know a lot of us are like-minded, but this video is to talk to you guys who are just starting out or who want to start out. So always be perpetual students. Take criticism, take a lot of information in, take classes if you want. Be a lifelong student. And most importantly, I think, is to get out of debt. Because if you carry a lot of debt over to your property, into your homestead lifestyle, and you are trying to change careers, 
you may not make as much money as you did before in the city, then it's really important to get rid of that debt because you're slave to those lenders. And friends, in addition to drawing things out and planning for your homestead, also make lists. I make lists every single week. I revise my old lists, I cross stuff out, I make new goals, I cross goals off that I've accomplished. It's so important to, um, to make goals. So a couple of years ago, I said to all of you that this year I wanted to put in solar and a greenhouse and water uh, reclamation. And I did those things. I held myself accountable, not only because I said them publicly to you, but I wrote those goals down and I stuck to them. I really wanted to move forward because I was holding myself back actually by just tending to the garden. So this is from experience, right? This is all the things that I did right and wrong. I focused too much on that garden to begin with and was trying to grow everything first without getting all those other things set up. So one thing to think about too, I guess, is like a permaculture idea for your homestead. So try to be completely self-sufficient. Have all these systems working together. They're all working off each other. You can see I've got my leaves raked up here. That's gonna be turned into my soil for next year for my garden. I compost everything else from the garden and all the kitchen scraps from the house. I shred or uh, chip all the branches that are around so that I can use them also for a compost or a mulch. Just think about how you can be more so self-sufficient in a permaculture mindset on your homestead. Okay, friends, I want you to prioritize what I talked about and hopefully that'll help you to not get super overwhelmed on your new homestead. Now go click on this video right here, which shows you how we originally built our Back to Eden garden. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.